Hey guys, I have our 90 day single life recap and I have my notes and I have some notes for Voltra online. And basically we will start off with what happened previously. Caesar leaves the Ukraine. He's worried about Alana. Fabian texts Tiffany after ghosting her for days. She calls it off. Tanya tries to hit on a woman. Debbie talks to her friend about moving to Canada. And Natalie goes to see Michael after he helped her mom escape the Ukraine. So basically, Vulture Online says, we're close to the end of the season, but back to the wood makes it feel like we're finally getting to the action. So much happens and we didn't have to deal with Veronica's fake drama with Justin. Instead, we get right to the drama that matters. Will Colt blow up over Debbie's moving to Canada? Is Mike's mom going to destroy Natalie as soon as she gets to squin? Has Caesar given his Ukrainian girlfriend any money? For once, the producers stop with cliffhangers and get to the conflict. Well, obviously, we are waiting for the inevitable scary reunion between Mike, Natalie, and Mike's mom. But they tease us here. First, we check in with Mike who updates us on a few important things. His mom has moved in with him and she still own, or he still owns a pet rat that Natalie made him buy. That's big news since every viewer of Happily Ever After assumed that the rat was dead after Natalie stopped feeding it almost a season ago. But no, Mike is still being a good guy who takes care of things and people he loves. That just happens to include Natalie's mom. When the war broke out in Ukraine, Mike sent money so she could escape. This is the excuse Natalie has come in his life once more to cause havoc. So the scene is starting off with Natalie arriving in Seattle. She's going to Mike's house. Um, she's He's touched her heart because he helped her mom move uh, or leave uh, the situation. And she's confused about Mike and Josh because Josh offered no help at all. But Mike has a connection with her mom. And then just like uh, Vulture Online said, he had the pet uh, rat on the back of the cat and he also has a dog and the people on pillow talk were like they don't chase each other so mike's mom says that when he finds she finds out that natalie is supposedly coming to get her stuff she says that natalie causes all the drama then we flash back to the tell-all where his, trish says i didn't call you a hooker and she's addressing Natalie but clearly she does not like her at all so now we all know if Josh told Natalie he was going to visit an ex whom he gave money to she would flip out Josh knows all about Natalie's trip and doesn't seem to care he understands they have a connection and he respects it he has a connection with his children's mothers and one of them even lives with him rather than see it that way however Natalie views his lack of jealousy as a sign that he no longer cares I disagree she acted like she was okay with it it's a prime setup for natalie begging mike to take her back but the her motive is so fake she's been demanding josh to have a baby with her but she knows mike doesn't want kids at all mike will never give her the future she wants but he is the key to her green card stand ballot hopefully mike's mom keeps him from falling for her nonsense well his her his mom did say that her iq was the size of a bag of farts so or crazy so my whole thing here is that his mom is ready for natalie to to bring it so i don't think that this is going to be a good situation at all she doesn't care for her and she's coming for natalie so natalie is when she's on the phone with y'all she's noticing landmarks and she's getting excited and she says that you know she um I guess she misses the farm or the ranch. But to me personally, I don't think that she will be happy there. I just don't think she will. Okay, so next up we go with Debbie. And basically, Debbie seemed ready to take on any nonsense cult threw at her this week. Tony comes down from Canada to help her pack. And when Tony gets to the house, he's like, what have you done? This is a lot of stuff. We're going to be packing for two days nonstop. I'm not touching any of cold stuff. He can come get it. So then they go in a room where uh, there's ashes, I guess, of cats. And Harley's ashes are gone. So Debbie acts like she forgot that she told Colt that he can get his dad's ashes because they're going on a trip. And he wanted to spread them out. But she's mad because he didn't tell her first before coming to get the ashes that she already agreed that he can have. I mean... Am 
am I the only one that noticed that? So then she also warns him that Cold is a child who may throw a fit, but she wants Tony to play it cool. Tony says he'll defend his woman if Cold tries anything, but eventually agrees to get up and leave if things go wrong. So this uh, person says that I've doubted Tony and Debbie, but this is how I know he truly cares for her. You couldn't stop me from roasting Cold if I were in his position. Tony must really care for that woman. And I, I do agree. Um, Cold, Vanessa, Debbie, and Tony mostly have a boring dinner. Well, the people on Pillow Talk uh, stated that when they entered the room, Cold and Vanessa did not rise to greet them. You know, as a sign of respect, they just sat down. And then one of the guys uh, on uh, Making Mad stated that they skipped scenes, you can tell, because they sat down and they got their food. But Debbie explained that fate brought them together and Cole asked zero questions about Tony or who he is. Instead, I think that he's, he did say, why do you love my mom? And Tony gave him a, a very good answer of why he loved her. And Debbie says that when Vanessa asks what makes him perfect, Debbie says he's the calm one. Cole says, why do you love my mom? And Tony says, Debbie is, um, he explains why he, loves Debbie and Debbie is she was scared to tell Cope that she was moving however she just went ahead and blurted it out uh, they state that instead of Cope asking questions he shared in his individual interview that Tony is nothing like his dad even though he doesn't know Tony at all he just met Tony Debbie and Vanessa had a falling out since Cope moved out but Vanessa is mostly polite and quiet Colt tries to start some mess by pointing out it'll be hard for Colt and Debbie to fix their relationship if she's in another country. But Debbie is ready for it. She likes it. Whatever, kid, come visit. And they say that they love seeing Debbie finally stand up for herself. But Debbie is like, you can come visit. You know, it's Canada. It's not uh, the North Pole somewhere. So they hug each other and they leave. And Colt says, um, will you miss me? And she says, you know, of course she will. And they tell each other they love each other. And I thought that was really cute. Okay, so next we have Tiffany and she and her children are fixing snacks. Her mom comes over and uh, she tells her mom or she talks about meeting Fabian and how that didn't work. So they say that maybe Tiffany could learn a lesson from Debbie because that girl has been struggling since she ended things with broke Fabio. I will give her credit. She goes on a date this week with a very boring man named Dan. I disagree. I thought that the date was nice. They went horseback riding. Um, they seemed to have some chemistry. And she, they, she did say, and horseback riding is a very brave first date choice. I know so many people who are afraid to ride horses, but she went for it. Dan is a teacher and a comedian. Red flag. But I worry that Tiffany is already rushing things. Before the date, she says she doesn't expect everyone she goes out with to be the love of her life. But by the end of the date with Dan, she's asking if he wants to be a stepdad. Slow down. I disagree. Um, they were tell exchanging corny jokes, which was cute. And he did say, she did tell him that she was still married. And he did state that he would like to go on another date with her. And I thought it was sweet that he asked her, can he give her a kiss on the cheek? And she said, yes. So to make things worse, her ex-husband Ronald pops in for a video chat with his kids. And she says, a really kid, but we all know that he claims Daniel as his son too. Daniel seems tired of pretending that the man is his stepdad. I did think that Daniel did act like he was a little on the tired side. Ronald uses it as an excuse to hit on Tiffany and make her feel guilty. She plays it off well enough, but you can tell she's considered taking him back. She really wants to take him back. She had already said it. Is this a sign that I should get back with Ronald? When she said she has feelings for him, I was screaming for her to get up. He has fooled you too many times, girl. That man will find love with someone else because he's a mean narcissist. Don't fall for it. At least she knows she needs to focus on healing. But now, she did state that she told uh, Ronald that she had been on dates. He told her as well that he had been on dates, but there was no one like her. And now... Everyone is saying, don't go back um, on Pillow Talk to your ex. And I agree. Ronald did state that 
he's changed and she's saying that if he had told her these things previously, then maybe um, they wouldn't be in the situation they're in now. So then we go to Tanya, which I wrote nothing on because she's going on a date with a woman and I have zero interest in that. But I will read what is here, which states that Tanya also needs to focus on healing. She clearly still wants Sinjin, but instead she decides to start dating women as a distraction. She matches with a woman who is the opposite of everything she stands for. She is Southern and white, like real Southern and white. This is from Vulture Online, it's not for me. Kentucky Southern and Boston White. Tanya is a free-spirited hippie who believes in healing potions. They might both be anti-vaxxers though, so maybe they have that in common. To her credit, Tanya's day is very nice and normal. She brings a picnic basket and a kite so they can have fun. She tells her to relax and sympathizes with Tanya's first lady date jitters. So, yeah, I, I wrote nothing down um, about that. And then we have Caesar, who is basically at work. Um, it's been a few weeks since he got back, and he and Alana are texting every day since the war has broken out and he is with his client and let me see i wrote his client's name down but i can't find it right now but his client basically tells him april his his customer says that if she's not willing to leave and let you help her with the war breaking out in the ukraine how do you think she's going to leave for love because basically her dad doesn't want to leave she wants to stay with her dad so if she wants to stay with her dad now and there's a war how do you know she's gonna leave if you want to pursue a relationship and bring her over to the United States I don't think that's gonna happen next time on 90 day fiance Veronica is basically smashing things in a smash house I guess and she is dropping f-bombs to everyone Justin Tim Tiffany and Dan are on a date and she is telling him about Ronald Tanya and her date are talking, and her date reminds her that she is still married. Natalie tells Michael she loves him, and she um, can move back. Mike, don't fall for it. So these are the notes from the Vulture Online article. She says, I was so happy to see that Mike kept the pet rat, rat alive. I was sure it was a bear or she was sure it was bear food by now. I love that his mom said Natalie's IQ is about as big as a fart. I still don't think she called Natalie a hooker, but that is a great insult. Anyway, we'll get to see this confrontation next week. No Veronica, yay. Tiffany's flirty joke was so corny, but she's cute. I love that Tony didn't even try to come for Colt and sat back and let Debbie handle it. Did you notice Debbie and Tony had barely finished their food when Colt left? Felt rude. Debbie still had a whole steak. Can I really fault Tanya for bringing whatever she bought on her first date? Can't can't say I've been there. Caesar is back in his own, taking care of women's feet to feed his fetish. At least he's working again. So sending a lot of money won't be hard. So those are the Vulture Online notes. Thank you so much for watching uh, the 90 Day Single Life Recap. Make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel.